that we celebrate Presbytery Sunday and uh, delight to have with us men of the Presbytery. Uh, all of you, I think, are well familiar with Brother Randy Artis, the pastor of the Charlotte Bible Presbyterian Church, uh, a strong church, a church that's faithful to the Lord. Under Brother Artis's leadership, they've gone through some incredible trials. I thought that didn't mean it that way. Uh, <laughs> During his tenure there, he's not the one bringing the trials, but they've had an incredible amount of vandalism. Uh, they've just recently had their entire gymnasium burned down. They'd had uh, vandalism to the church building, things stolen from the church building, uh, damage done to the manse next door, the old one. And uh, it's a church that needs our prayers. They're in the middle of spiritual warfare. It's a good and faithful church. And it is with delight that we... Welcome to our pulpit this morning, Brother Randy Artis. Brother, preach the word. In light of the Lord's Supper this morning, I'd like to turn to 
That class that passes, uh, passes the, the Apostle Paul institutes the Lord's Supper for the church. That would be in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Words for me to many of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ, who have partaken of the Lord's Supper for many years, being reminded that it is only through the Lord Jesus Christ, His precious blood, His, His suffering on the cross, that such guilty sinners as ourselves can have the remission of sins and everlasting life. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 23 says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. We had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sick and among you many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the precious privilege it is to partake of the Lord's Supper. And Lord, as the Apostle Paul gives us these words of institution, recalling to our hearts and minds uh, that time in which the Lord Jesus took bread, what we know as the Last Supper. We pray the Spirit of God will warm our hearts. We remind us afresh that it is only through the Lord Jesus Christ that we can have the forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. And that these words of institution would never become commonplace will never become so familiar to us that it loses its impact upon our lives. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We know the Apostle Paul, when he wrote to the church at Corinth, had to deal with many problems. And one of the problems was the misunderstanding of the Lord's Supper. They were literally getting gathering together and and misunderstanding the significance of the Lord's Supper and have, having a having a common meal and and there, there was the, the misunderstanding and so the Apostle Paul comes and, and 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 he writes these words and instruct us and reminds us of the simplicity of the fact that when Christ instituted the Lord's Supper. It was to be something that would focus the minds and attention upon of the hearts of those who partook of what he was going to do. He was going to the cross. He, he was going to suffer. He was going to endure the, 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 the sufferings of Calvary. He was going to endure crucifixion. It was all in God's plan, yes. But that didn't make it any less difficult, any less harder. It, 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 it diminished the sufferings that Christ had to endure. And as the Apostle Paul writes to correct the misunderstanding and, and to set in motion those things which ought to be done in the Lord's Supper, my how simple uh, he makes it. And... Brethren, as we come together this morning, we know that 
we can't preach a sermon on the many errors concerning the Lord's Supper that have come into the history of the Christian church, the history of Christianity. But as we come together this morning, let me remind you of the simplicity of the service. The simplicity and the, the simpleness. And when we're speaking of simple, we're not speaking of something that is elementary, something that is not for the intellect, but something that we partake of and we partake of it in a way that the significance of what Christ did, has done is not obscured through the pageantry and the, 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 the extraneous things that too many times have been associated uh, with the Lord's Supper. Aren't you glad for the Lord's patience? Think about the fact that the church at Corinth was a church that had many problems. They, this was first generation Christianity. This was during the time of the apostles. There was a time of great transition. There was a time of, uh, of uh, uh, there was a learning curve that had to be experienced by the Christian church. Jerusalem and the ancient worship of the Jews, that was all to be done away with in Christ. And now the simplicity of the gospel and the, what Christ has done on the cross, that was to be the focus. That was to be what was to be preached and proclaimed. Christ crucified for sinners. And the simplicity of the Lord's Supper reminds us that it is Christ who must get the glory. It is Christ who must receive the praise. It is Christ that we're remembering. It is Christ that's done the work. Not you, not I, not the church. It's simply our privilege to partake. It's a solemn thing, yes. The Apostle Paul teaches us here in this passage that there were some who were experiencing great chasing of the Lord, even death. Even death. Note it says in verse number 30, For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Is Paul saying that those who partake, partake unworthily, those who abused the Lord's Supper, those who were misunderstanding what they were doing, they were suffering chastisement for the Lord to such a degree that some died? That's what he's saying. Well, these words certainly cut the grain in the 21st century. There's such a misunderstanding of who God is and such a misunderstanding of, of the love of God that that God would do that? That's what the Word of God says. So brethren, when we come to partake of the Lord's Supper, it is something we're to approach reverently and, and humbly. And yet let me remind you as well that as we do seek to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, with many sins and errors, if, if we're striving to serve the Lord, if we do diligently seek Him, let us not be discouraged and not partaking as well. Yes, we're to come reverently and soberly and respectfully, but we can also come rejoicingly as well. What does it say in verse number 26? Read with me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show. That word do show has the idea of a declaration. And I believe what the Apostle Paul is getting at here is that until Christ comes, this service has been instituted that we would never ever lose sight of the fact that it is Christ 
and Christ alone who is to receive the preeminence in worship and service. It is He who died and rose again. It is He who we must serve. He doesn't serve us now. We serve Him. He came. He's done His work. He came not to be ministered to, but He came to minister and to give His life a ransom for many. And now He's at the right hand of the Father. Till He comes for us. And till He comes, every time we partake of this supper, we are publicly declaring that it is only in Christ, His shed blood, and His broken body, it is only through Him that we have hope of eternal life. Not a hope so. Not hope with a question mark behind it, as the world uses the word hope. But a hope with a period behind it. He's the blessed hope of the church. And as we anticipate His coming, as we wait for His coming, we partake of the Lord's Supper and say as we partake, that we are resting in Christ alone for our salvation. It is a message that the world needs to hear. As we gather this morning, yes, the public may not be here. The cameras may not be in the doors. But aren't you glad you still live in a country in which you can come together publicly and show the Lord's death till He comes? We don't have to hide. And even if we did live in a country, even if we were among, within a situation where we would suffer physically for our faith at the hands of the government, if we were found out, we would still, God's people would still worship and still do worship the Lord. We are told to remember them when bonds is being bound together with them. This is a this is a this institution of the Lord's Supper is for God's people. Not just for those of us who are Bible Presbyterians. I'm sure we're not the only ones in the world at this day today who are partaking of the Lord's Supper. And whether we're in Collingswood or whether we're in China, as we partake of the Lord's Supper, we do show and declare to the world that we are Christ and He is ours. So brethren, it's a great privilege to partake of the Lord's Supper. It's something to be done reverently, respectfully, soberly, honestly, but also rejoicingly. Let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Do you know Christ this morning? If you know Him, are you faithfully seeking to serve Him? You say, well, I, I, I don't do it perfectly. I know. Neither do I. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Even the sins that we've not yet committed as Christians. I'll tell you a little secret. You know, tomorrow you're going to sin, even as a believer. You're going to sin. You don't want to. But he that hath begun a good work in you will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. And what is that work? That's the sanctifying work. It is all through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so if you're here this morning, you may not be a member of the Bible Presbyterian Church, but do you belong to Christ? Are you in Christ church? Are you part of that worldwide body of God's elect people? Every kindred nation and tongue. If so, brethren, let us partake rejoicingly as well. And trust the Lord will bless us as we gather, as we've gathered to partake of the Lord's Supper. Let's pray. Father, we ask this day that as you have gathered us 
uh, together in this place of worship. Receive our thanksgiving. Father, we do not come before Thee presumptuously. And we thank Thee for the access the Lord Jesus gives us into Thy very holy presence. We thank You that we can be gathered today not only to worship Thee, but to especially remember that our Lord Jesus Christ, our beloved Son, suffered on Calvary's cross that we might have the forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.